this bill, although it does bear my name, it is more than just me in, in this bill. It's for not only the 310 women that were CSTs, but it's the rippling effect of this bill and what it will do for other female veterans. So as you guys all should know by now, after Congressman Issa and Dave was just up here telling you about the JAX Act, but I just want to reiterate that it is a bipartisan bill. And what it will do is that it is seeking to provide an equal treatment and support for female veterans in the special operations community, specifically a group of women that served in a program called the Cultural Support Team Program. While this bill has not become law yet, it is gaining substantial support with additional co-sponsors, and the CST community owes our heartfelt support and thanks to those who have played a pivotal role in this journey. The Jack Act started all because I spoke out about the mistreatment I was receiving while requesting access to healthcare and treatment I rightfully deserved. I soon realized that my story of being marginalized and discounted for my service was the norm, and it wasn't the exception, sadly. But everything changed in January of 2022. After years of being in and out of traumatic brain injury clinics while seeking my VA disability, I was denied my TA TBI claim and I was told I would have to go through another formal investigation to prove that my TBI was combat related. Now just to give you an idea, I've gone through already one of these. It takes years and you're completely demoralized throughout the process. And even though I had been in treatment for so many years, they couldn't prove that my TBI, even though I had buddy letters, commander's letters, they still told me there's no way it could be combat related. You're gonna to have to have a formal investigation. So it was at this point in January of 2022, I reached out to the Special Operations Association of America for help. And that has led to me standing here before you today talking about this historical piece of legislation. So first and foremost, I want to express my deepest appreciation to Congressman Darrell Isis for his tremendous leadership and for sponsoring the JAX Act. Congressman Issa and your entire team, it is because of you and your unwavering commitment to our service women and your belief in the importance of gender equality that has been an inspiration to us all. Your sponsorship of this bill is a testament to your dedication to creating a more equitable and just society. The CSTs are grateful for your advocacy and the hope that you have ignited within us. So thank you to that entire table. I would also like to extend my heartfelt thanks to the initial co-sponsors, although they're not here tonight, they are veterans themselves, Representative Kiggins, Crow, and Julian. Their bipartisan support for this bill is a shining example of unity and collaboration in the pursuit of a common goal. By the transcending party lines, they have demonstrated their unwavering dedication to serving those who have served our nation. Thank you for recognizing the urgent need for changing and for standing up for the rights and well-being of our female veterans. In addition, I want to express my sincere appreciation for the Special Operations Association of America, specifically our Executive Director, David Cook, Founder, De Daniel Elkins, who is unfortunately not with us tonight, CEO, Stephen Patterson, and our Legislative Director, Don Franklin, and the list could go on and on. Your willingness to listen to our stories, including the experience of mine and all the other CSTs in the community, and to provide us a platform for our voice to be heard by our congressional leaders is truly commendable. Your support has given us the support that we've needed to engage with members of Congress like Congressman Darrell Isis, and we thank you so much for that. I would like to thank Patient Thriving CEO Terry Wilcox and the team for hosting this Advocacy Awards Center. 
and for shining more awareness on patient challenges to help make change happen within the world by giving patients better access to healthcare and medicine. And I would like to pause just for a moment just to give a round of applause for everything that they're doing within the community. represents a beacon of hope for the female veterans of the special operations community. For far too long, female veterans have been marginalized and discounted for our invaluable service. We have carried physical and moral injuries, questioning if we even deserve health care and the benefits and the dis disability rights that we rightfully deserve. This is a painful reality that many of us face and one that I personally face on a daily basis. But today, the JAX Act, while it's gaining momentum, we can dare to dream of a brighter future. This legislation will help rectify the injustice suffered by these exceptional women and mark a significant step forward supporting female veterans. It will grant us the equal treatment we deserve in seeking health care and ensure that we receive the disability benefits that acknowledge the sacrifice that we have made for our nation. <laughs> While there is work that still needs to be done, the progress we have made is undeniable. The JAX Act has rallied bipartisan support and garnered attention from the dedicated individuals who believe in the power of change. It is a testament to resilience and determination of a collective voice. So in closing, I extend again my deepest gratitude to Congressman Darrell Isis and his entire team, the Representative Kiggins, Pro, and Julian, the Special Operations Association of America, Patients Rising, and every single person that is in this room tonight. Your steadfast commitment, support, and belief in the power of change have brought us closer together, realizing a more equitable future for all. Together, let us continue to advocate for justice, recognition, and equal opportunities for all, including those who have honorably served our nation. Thank you again for this amazing award. So. <laughs>